Hello YouTube! Otaku Mom here for the Geekery Barn and uh, so I've been watching a lot of stuff on Godzilla so uh, recently on YouTube I don't know why um, I mean I love Godzilla I love watching Godzilla movies they're kind of like a thing for my childhood as it were and because uh, I used to watch as a kid I used to watch Creature Double Feature on uh on TV here in uh, it's out of a Boston station. Um, I used to watch that all the time when I was a kid, and I always loved big monster movies, especially Godzilla. So uh, any chance to get to watch the big monster movie and watch big monsters fight each other? Yeah, I watch it. <laughs> I kind of grew up on it. So um, <clears throat> so I've been hearing about uh, this new one uh, out of Japan. Uh, it's a reboot. Uh, it's a Japanese reboot. Uh, called uh, Shin Godzilla. It came out in 2016. Um, it was released here in the States shortly after that. Uh, they could... Um, Toho has a weird... Um, not weird, but they have a contract with Legendary Pictures because Legendary Pictures is the one just doing the American Godzilla movies. Uh, and, and that is that um, Japan... Uh, Toho cannot release a Japanese Godzilla movie in the same year as a regular, uh, as an American Godzilla movie. And, uh, which makes sense, because it means that, um, what it means is that, uh, it the way it doesn't confuse the marketplace as it were. So, so that makes sense. So, um, so yeah, so 2016 was a year we didn't have an American Godzilla movie. We have one this year, um, and uh, so in 2016, uh, Japan released, uh, decided to do a reboot called uh, Shin Godzilla. So this is going to start a whole new series of uh, Godzilla movies for Japan. Now, at this point, they hadn't done a Amer they hadn't done a Japanese Godzilla in probably like 10 years. Uh, that seems to be the that seems to be the timeline as far as when they do reboots of the series. Um, so when Japan does their reboots, so they get like about ten years, and then there's like, oh we want to do Godzilla again, so they do the reboot. So anyway, so what they did for this one is uh, uh, is very uh, very good because. What they did is kind of go back to the roots of using Godzilla as an allegory. Uh, and instead of just simply being a giant monster giant, fighting other giant monsters. So what they did is they brought him back to being an allegory. And this time they used him as an allegory for the uh, natural disasters that had happened in Japan. In particular, the, uh, the earthquakes and tsunami that happened and the Fukushima... Uh, uh, nuclear reactor uh, issues and they use the movie as a satire of the government's handling of those situations uh, be, um, the movie is I should have to point out before I go any further the movie is directed by uh, Hideaka Anno and uh, Shinji Haga Haguchi now uh, Anno did Anno did the uh, the, the non special effects scenes and uh, Higuchi did, did directed the special effects scenes and um, so so a lot of times is that uh, American our audiences if they were if they were to jump in and watch this particular film they may be confused about some aspects of the film that don't make sense to them if they're not aware of Japanese politics and how Japanese bureaucracy bureaucracy works. Now, soon after the nuclear the Fukushima nuclear plant meltdown and the uh, and the handling of the tsunami and tsunami and earthquakes in Japan a few several years ago, um the Japanese government was getting a lot of criticism as far as the uh, as far as their reaction as far as how they handled the situation uh, as far as in regards to evacuations and and whatnot and how it was all handled 
and uh, this movie this movie evokes a lot of the images from that from those times. So there's a lot of shots in the film where you see the boats uh, the boats getting put onto the onto the land. You see um, a lot of shots of the of the water coming in. You see a lot of shots of uh, buildings getting destroyed, obviously, because it's Godzilla. And a lot of it is... Uh, sorry, that is not Godzilla. That is my cat getting in front of the camera. Um, so you see a lot of shots of the... Um, so you see a lot of these disaster shots that kind of evoke that feeling of what was going on during those days. There's uh, and And that's what it's meant to do. Is It's meant to show the panic that was going on at that time and um and then they cut to the government agent they cut to the the government and it seems like they're having these constant meetings about what to do about every single situation and they have a meeting is it okay we're gonna we're done with this meeting let's go in the next room and have our next meeting and uh, it seems like um which is part of the joke in that um the uh, part of the satire being that they're having these constant meetings without really doing anything. Um, now they don't portray the government officials as being uncaring. Uh, they kind of portray them as having their hands tied on a lot of this because uh, Otto in evoking the Japanese government in this and their feelings on the um, and on how they handled the situation, he doesn't really portray them as so much as being uncaring to the situation. He shows them that they really do care, but as far as certain situations go, uh, he, sh he kind of shows them as having their hands tied uh, in a lot of these situations. Um, so, I'm just gonna get down. So he kind of shows them as pick up my mouse too. He shows them as having their hands tied. Um, in a lot of this. Because of the fact that they're trying, because of the fact that they, they have their own rules that they have to follow <coughs> in order to, in order to do, in order to do what they need to do. Um, so for example, uh, for example, for every single weapon that they have to fire against Godzilla, they have to ask the Prime Minister's permission for every single weapon, every individual weapon. He has to give his explicit permission, and uh, which he does, but uh, but it kind of kind of shows them that uh, it kind it kind of shows them a little, bit, a little bit with their hands tied as to what to do because they have to follow this sort of bureaucracy, um, and also the fact that they're trying to give this. They're trying to maintain this image of uh, calm and peace so that people don't panic. And then something happens and the people panic anyway. Um, because of the fact that the government, not that they lied to them per se, but that they didn't have all the information. So um, so then they're proven as liars. Like there's a scene where, like there's a scene where the, the prime minister um, is is giving a speech he's telling he's giving everybody the okay uh, he's telling everybody it's calm they don't think that God's that the creature at this point he's called the creature they don't think he's gonna go up on the land and then somebody comes up to go and goes what and then they cut and the monsters on the land so um, so yeah so a lot of it is because there's they're they're tied up by the bureaucracy as to what they should and should not know on uh, on this creature and uh, and on Godzilla and um, and just and just uh, turns into this whole big satire on uh, what what happened in the days after Fukushima and the uh, and the uh, earthquake and tsunami and how that was handled by the Japanese government and even today they're still criticized for what happened but um, but anyway so it ends up so it ends up being this really effective satire if you're familiar with what's going on. Uh, and what happened in the days after that. Um, so if you, because if you're not familiar with that, a lot of it could seem tedious and boring if you're not in on the joke, as it were. Um, <clears throat> if you're not in on what was going, what the movie is trying to say about that. So 
it kind of helps knowing that this is sort of satirical going into it to so that you know why people are suddenly going from one room to have a meeting then going into another room to have a meeting and then going to another room to have a meeting and uh, in the early in the early uh, in the early parts of the film so um, so some of it could seem somewhat tedious if you're not in on the joke as to what's going on so so as far as the acting goes very good job I watched the dub version of the film so everything I saw it was all it was all dubbed in English so I didn't see the so I can't I can only judge it by the dubbed version um, but the from what I saw uh, Funimation did a really good job with the dub um, from what so I didn't um, so I couldn't tell so I really couldn't tell you um, I can only tell I can only tell you how the <coughs> how the voice acting was and the the actors in the film they did a really good job um, I saw it in some some interview some reviews um, cited uh, the character of the half Japanese half American uh, bureaucrat who was the whose father is a senator is an American senator and is sort of the liaison and how they didn't think she was believable as they didn't think she was believable as being half Japanese half American as being not resident of Japan originally because her English is like really bad in the film um but i didn't hear that because because i watched the dub so i didn't hear that track of it um so i couldn't tell you but for what she was able to do she did a good job from what i saw anyway uh, with the dub and uh, a lot of the actors are really like there a lot of the actors are really good in this you don't get to really know any of the characters in it because there are so many characters in fact one of the one of the ongoing jokes in the movie is the is the fact that each person has to and or instead of each person introducing themselves uh when a new person comes in they put a caption under they put a caption underneath as to their name and title uh in the japanese government and it keeps going like that and there's one character in particular they have to keep introducing him and and each time his title gets longer and longer <laughs> and uh it kind of show, kind of show how he goes with the ranks. His total his title just keeps getting longer and longer, um, every time they introduce him. So um, so you don't get to really know any of the characters in depth, but you're not really meant to. It's just meant to sort of like be a behind the scenes kind of thing, as far as um, as far as get as far as not so much about these characters, but as much as about the Japanese bureaucracy and how it works and uh, the satire and how that works and uh, how many and it's kind of hard when you have like so many people in the cast to get to get to know every single individual but but just to kind of get to know these uh, characters uh, not to know the characters but so much to get to know the bureaucracy behind it and um, and how it works and uh, and how that ends up uh, stymieing them when they're trying to get rid of Godzilla. Now, the next thing is about the special effects. Now, this is the first time in uh, Japan, in the Japanese uh, Godzilla movies, that they used a CGI Godzilla. And let me tell you, this looks really good. These, these effects were awesome. Uh, they did a really good job with these effects. Uh, Godzilla has never looked better. Uh, he's shown, and he's actually shown to go through stages. Um, so he doesn't start out as the Godzilla that you're seeing there. Uh, he actually start out, he actually goes through four forms before he's eventually stopped at the end. Um, and that's not a spoiler. He always gets stopped at the end. Um, but... Before he eventually gets stopped at the end, he actually goes through four forms, and he come and he gets bigger and bigger and bigger. So with e so each time he gets bigger and bigger, and as you can see right there, he just looks awesome. That is awesome. Now the end of the movie is going to be debated by a lot of people, and uh, I'm sure it will be. And if you if you watch if you haven't watched this yet, uh, the end of the movie is going to be debated as far as the final shots of uh, Godzilla at the end. Um, so I'm still trying to figure that out myself as to what it means. 
Uh, I know they said they're planning on doing more movies, and so the, but they can't do the new one until... They can't start shooting uh, the new one until 2020 because um, they just released King of the Monsters this year. Next, I think next year they're going with... Uh, I think the plan is to go with Godzilla vs. King Kong, uh, if I remember correctly. I'm not sure. I don't, I don't remember. I think it's that, that way. So they said they can't start shooting anything until 2020. Uh, for the next Godzilla movie because of the because of the deal they have with Legendary, and so with that with so with that in mind, uh, it may get explained it may get explained in the next movie as to what's going on with this tale, but one of the cool things about this is that they, um, in keeping with, um, in keeping with the more traditional look of Godzilla, they also. Um, They've also the changes they've made to him. They've given him new abilities. Um, so now, so given him new abilities, I'm not going to spoil any of the abilities, but they're pretty cool. <laughs> um, as someone who's been watching Godzilla movies for like years, I I love what they did with they love what they did with these abilities. Um, so they did a really good job. Um, they with a whole new look, with whole new abilities, and just a whole new origin story for him. So. Um, so my verdict is that seek this out and uh, and watch it for yourself. And um, it's available. It is available on if you you can purchase it on Vudu if you have a Vudu account. Um, it is available on Amazon Prime. Uh, it is available on DVD and Blu-ray. It is also on Funimation site. So if you have Funimation account, you can watch it there. Um, so uh, I advise that you check this one out if you're if you are a huge Godzilla fan. So. Um, so later this weekend, I'm going to have a review of uh, Spider-Man Far From Home. Uh, I'm going to see that tomorrow with my husband and my son. So I will get that up this weekend, and I will see you on the flip side. Okay. Uh, Otaka Mom out. Bye.